Korean state media, they say that Saturday's launches were part of a strike drill meant to check large caliber, long range, multiple rocket launchers and tactical guided weapons. Although, as mentioned, South Korea says the missiles were likely short range. And prior to that, the regime hadn't tested any since 2017. Now, here is a timeline. Here are some significant tests from that year. Now, you may, of course, recall July 4th, which just so happens to be American Independence Day. That was when that year North Korea claimed its first successful test of an intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM. Now, that move sparked a scramble for U.S. national security to discuss its options. And then the next month, um, the U.S. President Donald Trump warned Pyongyang that, quote, all options are on the table. That after North Korea fired a missile over Japan, and then in September, there was another major show of defiance. That was when North Korea tested a hydrogen bomb, the most powerful weapon it had ever tested, and another ballistic missile flew over Japan. Now, on November the 29th, 2017, North Korea claimed to have tested a new type of ICBM capable of striking the U.S. mainland. And that was the final launch before last week's strike drill. Now, joining us now, we have John Delory of South Korea's Yonsei University in Seoul. And he joins us now live. John, thank you for joining us. What message do you think is North Korea sending with this latest weapons test? Yeah, well, I think if you put the, uh, the test together with the statements by Kim Jong-un himself and many of his diplomats, um, you know, there's not a lot of room for interpretation. Kim's clearly uh, disappointed with the outcome of Hanoi, frustrated. He said he doubts the sincerity now of the Trump administration. Uh, and so this is, you know, sort of acting out with weapons tests, what they're saying in words, which is, you know, if, if this is the new normal, uh, of kind of accepting a non-outcome of Hanoi if South Korea and the United States are going to continue uh, their various uh, military exercises and weapons tests, then North Korea is going to do the same. Your analysis in line with what we just heard from the South Korean president, that this was an expression of discontent from North Korea. Now, we know that today's firings involved short-range missiles, not ICBMs. But does Kim Jong-un still represent a very, very serious threat, not just on the Korean Peninsula, but to the United States as well. Yeah, I mean, the distinction between uh, the short range and the ICBM is very important uh, because, you know, one thing that's in place to sort of keep the possibility of diplomacy intact is the self-declared unilateral moratorium that Kim has, has reaffirmed recently where he said we won't do nuclear tests or ICBM tests. But, um, you know, I think we are now on a, a kind of slippery slope um, mm -hmm. Already, we've seen two tests this week. Um, I mean, it, without some major diplomatic movement, I would expect more of this and probably a gradual increase in the sort of severity of it. And at a certain point, um, you know, it's very easy to end his moratorium on ICBM tests simply by having yeah. one. Um, so the distinction is important, but, you know, we had a year and a half of no missile tests whatsoever. You and I weren't talking as much, uh, and that yeah. era is now over. So that's already a very negative development. Yeah, I mean, but this week we're seeing this uptick in weapons testing. You're anticipating more to come. Uh, this latest firing, it comes as the U.S. suspends efforts to retrieve war remains from North Korea. We are at an impasse here, a big one. Is there any sign that both sides are willing to talk? You know, that, uh, any sign for dialogue, especially after the failure in Hanoi? Well, I, you know, I would say fundamentally at the, the leader level, uh, Donald Trump, you remember his recent tweet, he said, we will make a deal. Um, he's tried to affirm that he has this great relationship with Kim Jong-un and he wants to get back to the table. And also, if you parse the statements coming from Pyongyang, uh, they're not saying we refuse to talk to you anymore. Um, but, you know, another, another aspect of this that's very negative is the whole inter-Korean process is kind of ground down to a halt. The two Koreas mm -hmm. aren't talking. Um, so. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm an optimist on this stuff, but it, frankly, it's very difficult right now to imagine how, what is going to bring these parties back together. I don't think humanitarian aid at this stage from South Korea is going to do the trick. Um, you know, so this is a real test insofar as Trump, Kim and Moon don't want to continue with this, that this is a plan B, not a plan A. Uh, they're going to have to make more significant moves to get things back on a diplomatic track. Absolutely. This is a delicate time. John Delury, always appreciate your analysis. Thank you and take care.